All right, everyone, welcome back here to News Now. You see some cloudy <laughs> skies there in the distance. I didn't well, know you did weather. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing a Staff little bit of Staff meteorologist. Yeah. Mike Page, I like that. I was saying, you see some clouds there in the distance. They might as well be over Talking Stick Arena as well, yeah, huh? That's for sure. I mean, look, it's. Um, I'm at the point where nothing surprises me about how this organization, the Phoenix Sun, mm -hmm. is run. It's. You know, I've said this kind of before, Mike, never underestimated competence. And yeah. I just think that from where they were as an organization a decade ago, the Nash Amara years, to what's happened over nine years, what is it, uh, six coaches in seven years? Mm -hmm. Um, a, a, a variety of GMs that have come and gone. Sure, sure. Revolving, revolving door. door. You, you, you cannot have continuity. You must have continuity to be successful in sports. And this is just another example of how poorly run this franchise is. It's, it's mm -hmm. sad for the NBA fan in town. It's it's pathetic, actually. But we've seen this deterioration happen for almost a decade. And, and, and you talk about the uh, about the fan base. What does this do for the fan base for the Phoenix Suns fans? Well, I, I think it, they're they're smart. The fan that really cares about the Suns is sitting there going, okay, I, I, they might work for a business or they might work might might have their own business. They might sit there and say, you know, I know when I run my business, I can't keep changing my supervisor, my manager, my mm -hmm. GM every every year yeah, right. and expect results. People are smart enough today with social media and information to say, this isn't properly run. Yeah. And and here we are seeing what was once a Sunstown. I mean, it was the first pro team in the history of this city. Mm -hmm. And and we've seen it crash and burn. And it, it, it lays right on the lap of Robert Sarver. I mean, there's, he signs off on these decisions. Mm -hmm. he, he, you've got a guy in Jeff Bauer that's come in with a title, and he answers to the GM. I mean, it's confusing. It's mismanagement. And sadly, you know, with just 19 wins this year. Now, ironically, yeah, they 1963. keep 1963. Yeah, they, they, they keep losing. You know, eventually they, they are going to get better. Yeah, right. But do you really want to reward failure? Mm -hmm. Do That's you really true. want to reward incompetence to where you, you stockpile players and picks? And over time, you are going to get better. But there's just something sickening to the NBA fan that says mm -hmm. this this organization is not being run properly, and it's 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 glaringly yeah. obvious. And what is the rest of the basketball world as far as other teams, owners view the Suns? I mean, well, they I think like what the heck is going on in Phoenix? Yeah, th th that's legit. And whether they're commentators or whether they're the commissioner, Adam Silver, who cares about every franchise, mm -hmm. especially the Suns, and that they were once the model franchise. Now the question is, who do you attract? Do I want, is a, a valued free agent really gonna play here when he no. knows there's so yeah. much turmoil? Does a guy like LaMarcus Aldridge who considered coming here, there's no way, he goes to San Antonio. And that also includes management and coaching. Mm -hmm. Well, if you, I don't have a job, okay, well, I'll work for the Suns. Right, you know right. what I mean? It's like the last stop. Mm -hmm. It went from being a destination, now it's the last stop. And it, it's just unfortunate because here we are now on the other side of this business model. The renovation is, is going to occur. Mm -hmm. But my problem is you have a responsibility if you're an owner. And that responsibility is you're, you're part private public utility. If you're a son, you have a responsibility to run, at least put a good product yeah. on the court. and and do the right thing and run the right business. If you want taxpayer dollars, mm -hmm. then you have an obligation to do it right in a respectable way. And it's it's just unfortunate to see how this thing has spiraled into almost an irrelevant franchise. Yeah, I mean, pretty much have a dartboard and just start picking at problems that you yeah. see with the Suns. I right. mean, they could really just add up. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's it. I mean, look, I'm trying to go through, you know, the the last six, seven years, fired Alvin Gentry. They brought in uh, Lindsey Hunter. Mm -hmm. That didn't work. Yeah. Then they brought in Jeff Hornacek. All right, they mm -hmm. fired Jeff. Um, then they brought in, my goodness, I mean, Earl Watson. Yeah. That didn't work, but a year and a half or so. Right. Then they brought in Jay Triano. Then they brought in Igor Kokoskov. I mean, they, there's a lot. The thing that I think a lot of people don't see is the cold heartedness. You move your family here. Mm -hmm. You respect the son's legacy, and now you ice a guy. 
not after the season you wait a couple weeks you float them out there, yeah, I mean, yeah. there there's a lack of compassion and understanding on how this business is being run you meet Jeff Hornacek at the airport at two two in the morning after a long road trip and you fire him mm -hmm. you know you don't do Brutal, that yeah. I mean it, it, there, there's a lack of class what's what's going on here and uh, I think anybody that cares about the NBA or downtown Phoenix should be concerned mm -hmm. on how how neglectful this organization is being run. So as we get closer in, into the summer then, I mean, what what, what are the Suns going to do this summer well, I, as I, we I, look forward to October? I, I can't imagine that Monty Williams, you know, they said part of this maybe is the availability of Monty Williams. I mean, if Monty Williams, who's been a head coach before, if he has the choice between the Lakers and LeBron and the Phoenix Suns, he's not coming here. No, no. Are you kidding me? So I, I think that, you know, looking forward to come here for a fuel stop yeah you exactly know? I mean, you know I, that's it but the, the problem you have Mike is this is that there will be a little bit of a buzz but it's only because of the failure of this team and 19 wins they'll have a shot at another top draft pick mm -hmm. but is this how you want to do you want to yeah. back do you want to back into good players this way after nine years of sure losing? no you don't I mean and, and that's the, that's the problem you have the perception of where this franchise is at and, and I think the commissioner, Adam Silver, has to step in and, and at least privately say something to Robert Sarver and say, look, Robert, th you're embarrassing us. Yeah. You're part of an elite club of 30 teams. Mm -hmm. you, you, what you've done to this franchise over the last nine years is unacceptable. But, I, you know, we'll see if there's any way to address it. Um, if you're a minority owner, you've got to be concerned uh, about you know, if, let's say you go out in public, you're at a 7-Eleven. Oh, there's that guy, yeah, Robert yeah. Sarver. I mean, I, I would be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I mean, look what you've done to a, a, a really good brand a decade ago. And what are season ticket holders saying? I mean, are they putting well, a plug? Are they saying, I mean, like, when is, where are we going to see the, I, I'm the told end of the light? I, I think you still have some star power with DeAndre Ayton and Devin Booker. Mm -hmm. The lower bowl sales are pretty decent. The upper bowl are almost negligent, non-existent. Um, you know, It'll be interesting to see how they sell this and, and what, what the new press conference is going to look like when they do sure. hire another coach. Yeah. But they, most people understand that you cannot run a business this way. You can't even run a business this way, mm -hmm. let alone a basketball team. Yeah, th think about if a restaurant had six chefs. Exactly, right? exactly right. I mean, it's uh, there's way too many chefs, and, and many of them over at the Suns don't know what they're cooking right mm -hmm. now. But um, sad state. And, uh, you know, if you would have said to me 10 years ago, at, during the Nash and Amari years, it would it would spiral to this. I would I wouldn't have believed it. Wow. And w what do you think the odds are? Sp speaking of odds, though, uh, not the Phoenix Suns, but the Vegas Suns. Could that ever happen? You know, I think this is this could be such a great NBA market. It has been in previous years. Um, I would I, I would have said this had the renovation not been approved. I then there might have been a threat mm -hmm. by the owner to say, look, if I don't get it here, then I'm going to have to go somewhere else. You still would need approval by the commissioner and the board of governors. But um, my curiosity is the minority owners. Uh, how, where are they at? Maybe they would band together and say, look, I want out. You pay me off and I'm out of this. I'm embarrassed. You feel that they have to be doing some whispering, right? They have to. I, I do know there's a few that are very concerned about how this team's been run into the ground. And um, I think the problem you have, though, is that Robert Sarver has been kind of insulated by his own wealth in that I don't know how self-aware he is. You know, how much is he concerned about? How much does, here's a question for the, the audience out there. How much self-awareness does Robert Sarver have in the, in, about what he's done to this franchise? Yeah, yeah. Does he ever look in the mirror and say, boy, I really screwed this thing up? Mm -hmm. I, don't think he, I don't think he does. So does, doesn't I, think he hit I, the iceberg yet. I, I don't. I, I, I just think there's something missing there, and I wish I knew what it was. Mm -hmm. yeah, I bet fans want it too. I mean, oh they, man, nine years, no playoff. Yeah. I mean, what's going on? And and another uh, firing. Mm -hmm. My goodness. I mean, it, it's um, you know, the minute you think, and, and I will say this: there's a, there's a lot of stuff that I'm, I'm aware of that I don't say publicly for legal reasons. Mm -hmm. But if you think it's bad, it's worse. And in a lot of different ways, and uh, it's just it's just too bad because really the Suns were our first pro team in town. They really started downtown revitalization. It was a Suns town. The mm -hmm. Barkley years, you know, Dan yeah. Marley, that right. whole crew, you know, the, the Nash Amari years. They, these were really great times for this city. Mm -hmm. It put this city on the national map, and it's just so sad to see the state of this franchise 
hit rock bottom. Yeah. I mean, it, this is a rock bottom point. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's when the Suns were here, the other sports teams sure. sur around them, surrounded yes. them. I mean, look, the, the success of the Suns led to the arrival of the Diamondbacks. Mm -hmm. The success of the Suns led to the arrival of the Coyotes, the Arizona Coyotes hockey team. Um, so, I mean, one thing, you know, and, and I think Jerry Colangelo, who, who uh, people now are going to look back and say, man, that, that guy did the right thing. He knew what he was doing. He ran a really good franchise, mm -hmm. and now without Jerry involved in the Diamondbacks or the Suns, yeah. we see kind of the results, and, and they're not pretty. Right. They're not pretty. No, no, and you see the scores, oh, right? Man, you see the, sure. see the record. The numbers tell the story. Yeah, they it's do. Disaster. The, the, they say I wish yeah, I, I feel like, I feel like I, I'm some kind of like um, funeral director here. <laughs> Mike, I mean, geez, I'm trying to be positive, there but uh, it's, it's, you know, it's unfortunate. Maybe just may, look at Robert Sarver could get over a billion dollars for this team. Mm -hmm. It's still a it, it's still an NBA team right. that, you know, my question is, would he be would he ever humble himself to do the right thing and sell the team? Yeah. So you're saying and, sell now, respect the well, fans. Well, and there's another idea where NBA fans in this town that care about this franchise, I think they should begin expressing themselves to the league office in mm -hmm. New York City. At the very least, just just talk from the heart. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about my team. I'm worried about all these firings and hirings yeah. and firings and hirings. And and why not, from a proactive standpoint, at least express yourself on what's happened over the last decade about the state of the Phoenix Suns, two people that matter in New York City, in the commissioner's office. Like, right. is there? Can we do something here? Yeah, yeah. I think it's time for Suns fans to express themselves. To do like a revolt. Yeah, I just say, look, I, I'm, I'm concerned. I want, I want a better product. Mm -hmm. We've paid for a better product here with taxpayer yeah. money. So why can't we have a better standard? That I, I'm waiting for the outrage of the fan base mm -hmm. to say, time out. This is unacceptable. I want to do something about this. You know, when the Browns left for Baltimore. There were hundreds of thousands of emails mm. that went to the league office. Two years later, they were granted a franchise. It was the outrage of the concerned fan that loved the Browns that that brought the team back two years later with the same name. Yeah, All yeah, right? yeah. That, I think that's, people need to express themselves, if they care, to the league office and to the commissioner and at least an email, a call, whatever the case may be, saying this isn't acceptable. This is this is an mm -hmm. embarrassment. So right now you're just seeing a like you said a total dismantling. Yeah, it is. It and is. and it's sad for the fans. It's yeah. sad for really any basketball fan. Yeah, to I see mean that. you you take a certain a amount of non-competitive team out there. Yeah, and you want civic pride goes with your teams, and you want at least acceptable, respectable product. Mm -hmm. and, and this has not been for a long, long no. time. All right, Jude Lacava, thanks you so much it, for breaking it all you down got it, man. for take us. Care, Appreciate buddy. it.